And with all that, AJ, it's time whew, to talk about Oscars. This isn't going to be controversial at all. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Let's bring it on. There's, there's three stories I want to cover here. Um, the first one, let's get this out of the way first. First video of this little mini series, then let's talk about the actual nominations. Okay. And let's just give our thoughts and feelings. Call this a prediction if you want, okay. uh, the best we can. Ha we'll, ha we'll have some Oscar prediction fun here. Okay. Because as of today, at the time of recording, the Oscar nominations for the 2024 Oscars are out. To my mind, the Oscars, and I think AJ agrees, they remain the most valid form of accreditation, of celebrating cinema, because the Oscars are made up of filmmakers like Steven Spielberg's, of producers like Jerry Bruckheimer's, of directors like Ava DuVernay's, multi-talented practicing filmmakers and film talent if you enter the industry you know there are certain things that are a go-to anyone who enters the film industry mm. their thing is, you know it's like if you're a tennis player you want to do Wimbledon you know yeah. if you're in the film industry it's to raise an Oscar no and I'm not I, as much as we can go through the others no you don't hear anyone say my biggest dream is to hold a Golden Globe to raise a moon man you know and I'm, I'm not crapping on the Golden Globes or MTV Awards you should you've kidding. seen how ridiculous they were a few weeks ago but we've been we've gone through that but what I'm saying is the aspiration there are certain things you know if you're a footballer you want to do the World Cup you want to raise a trophy at the World Cup sure. you're a wrestler you want to do mania if you're in the film industry, whether actor or behind the camera, you want to raise an Oscar. Like, Correct. Judgments Correct. of anything else, that is the measuring stick. The problem the Oscars have is as far as the general public are concerned. Because usually, and it, there'll be a new controversy every year. You know, a few years ago, it was Oscars so white. Um, then it was, oh, the Oscars don't have enough... Uh, female diversity then it was oh the oscars only go for arty farty stuff you know the highbrow stuff that nobody sees the oscars are out of touch and that's why nobody watches them listen a preamble to this my honest opinion is nobody watches the oscars because in most of the world they're shown live at an ungodly hour and they're four and a half hours long no award show needs to be that long it just doesn't um Let's go through the nominations and then we'll do predictions and we can kind of discuss, I guess, how to fix the Oscar problem. That's a good title of the video, actually, how to fix the Oscar problem. Um, so let's let's go through these nominations to start with. From This is directly from BBC, so uh, no faff. Now, kind of foreshadowing where this argument might go. The reality is, AJ, is that there are a lot of categories in the Oscars. This is already part of the problem, yeah? Now... The reality is most of these, with the highest of respect to the categories and the people in the categories, the average person doesn't care about. The big hitters yeah, are the same. best picture, best actor and actress, best supporting actor and actress, and best even director. Even that, even, even I, would, I would have put director over supporting actor. I would put director over supporting actor 100%. 100%. 100%. Adapted screenplay. Most people don't know what an adapted screenplay is. Original screenplay, people know. I don't think they really care. Original song? Maybe, because I, I... Listen, I'm not down with music. That's more your domain. But, like, that might be one that people go for, especially if there's some things like here, for instance, I'm just Ken, you know. That, yeah, okay, I can see how that would have popular appeal. Song, yes. Original score? Not really. Um, international feature, I wish, but not really. Best documentary feature, hell no, people don't care about that. They should, but they don't. Costume design, do people really care? You're, you, I'm talking about not the people, not the very specific demographic of people who would care about this. I'm not talking about the people in fashion or the, or the couturiers. I'm talking about average Joe Bloggs who goes to the cinema four times a year or five times a year. He or she or they do not care about the best costume design, right? Makeup and hairstyling, likewise. Production design, likewise. Sound, likewise. Film editing, I care. Most people don't. Cinematography, I would argue that there's maybe an argument to make about it. And as with visual effects. 
Can I live be action, real? Live action Can short no, animated no, short no, documentary short no. Enough. Many of those are in the same bracket. Okay. Literally, for the average person, they see these as in the same bracket. The reality is, of course, as we know, they're not. But do you see how many categories there are here and how few of them actually have that <gasps> wow factor? Like, I, I don't know if you've watched the Oscars live before, but they always bookend it almost like an episode of Monday Night Raw where they start with something, one or two things that are kind of like big deal, and then they bookend it with the rest. So they keep you watching until the end, right? They don't tell you the best film until right at the end. Oh, That's yeah, yeah, the yeah. big one. I, I, I've never watched it live, but but you know you're up and you're like, oh, what's the results? And all you're seeing is the red carpet of who's where in where. And you're like, I don't care. Can I yeah. just find out best picture, please? Who was the best actor? I know, I, I yeah, it's time and time again. That I'm familiar with. Yeah. So I'm not going to go through every single one of these and I'm not causing disrespect, but I'm realizing that we have a limited YouTube time here. Best cinematography. No, I'm not even. I'm even though I'd but like. We, li we listed. We listed what we know are the ones that people pay attention to. The one. Let's be honest. Let's call it a spade a spade. What makes the headlines the next day? Do you know what actually the average person might be interested in is best visual effects? Simply because, and I hear my reasoning with this. Simply because best visual effects usually are attributed to a big blockbuster movie that most people have seen. So it's one of I those movies where people I will be like, it depends oh, on the year. I've... Sorry? It depends on the year. In a year that you get something like Avatar all day long. In a year that like, happened last year, well, people just like listen to this year. It's quite, it's quite solid. This year for best visual effects, Napoleon, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Godzilla minus one, and the one who I think is going to win, which is the creator. Like, that's quite a populist category. Yeah. Yeah. At least three in five of those films, I think your average person will have seen Guardians, Mission Impossible, and maybe Godzilla. But at least again, it's a recognizable, at least it's a recognizable IP, right? For sure. So on that basis, I would say this category maybe has a level of interest just because audience can be like, oh, I saw that movie. You know, it's like watching University Challenge where you're like, oh, I know the answer to this one question. And then the rest of the show is like, I have no idea what the question even means. Um, but yeah, that, I, look, let me just get to get to the to the oomph here. Yeah? Let's go to let's go to best uh, best director. OK, so nominated this year for best director, Justine. Trier for Anatomy of a Fall, Martin Scorsese for Killers of the Flower Moon, Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer, and Yorgos Lanthimos for Poor Things, and Jonathan Glazer for The Zone of Interest. No, some for um, Zone of Interest I've not heard of, to my discredit. Anatomy but of a Fall I've, I've heard people rave about, but I haven't got a chance to seeing it. So just based off of the three that I've seen, Poor Things, Oppenheimer, and Killers of the Flower Moon. I don't think Scorsese's winning this. I just don't. I don't think this is... This is not bad. This isn't bad Scorsese, not by any chance. But this is middle-of-the-road Scorsese. This is a very good movie, but this is Martin Scorsese we're talking about. This is Departed, Goodfellas, Wolf of Wall Street. This ain't even close to that, Right? So he's been nominated as a recognition that his movie is very good. I don't think he's winning. Again, I can't comment on Anatomy of a Fall. That could be one of those little hidden gems that the Oscars get a hard on for. I think this is a two-horse race, and I think it's going to be a two-horse race for a lot of the nominations, by the way. I think this whole Oscar season is going to be up in the air between Poor Things and Oppenheimer. And now here's what I'd like to put to you. How many years has a kind of getting into DiCaprio reward territory here, right? How many years has a Nolan movie been nominated for Best Picture and Nolan been nominated for Best Director and neither have transpired? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're getting into DiCaprio territory here where it's like, you owe this guy for what he's done for cinema for the last few years. And if there was a movie to give it to him, 
do I think Oppenheim is his? Is it no? Mm. Is Oppenheimer my favorite of his movies? No, but I will damn sure listen to an argument of it being his most accomplished. This is the, this is what I'm aware of. Um, the the respect that has come out for Oppenheimer, it, it's not one that's taken lightly. You know, you you can have Nolan films are one of those things where there's always going to be respected, but the noise, the buzz, the appreciation for Oppenheimer is 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 second to none in terms of Nolan films. Again. Which, Deaf, deaf comic book, deaf taxes in comic book movies. We all know where I could lean. Yeah, I could go down the trilogy. Stuff like The Prestige, stuff like Inception. There are so many greats out there that you could quote, but I do believe this is the one for him. The day I believe so too. He's in dangerous waters though with poor things because it is exactly the type of mega avant garde. Nothing like it has ever been made before. High, high, high quality movie, which is just arty enough with the Oscars that it would be the sort of thing they go for. I think it's Oppenheimer's, but don't sleep on poor things. I get that, but let's, let's also be aware that they might play the game of, oh, we are different. We aren't the Oscars of old. And that could also lean his way. Not saying Huge that Christopher Nolan. Of- not Huge saying Christopher character. Nolan is a sympathy vote. Please do not think I'm ever saying that. But. It's not, but you have to understand, look, we're going to get to who the best, that was the best director. You're going to see who the best picture nominees are. You're going to see, this is a very different Oscars to a few years ago. Um, best supporting actor. You've got Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction, Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower Moon, who was brilliant in that, Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer, Ryan Gosling for Barbie, which I, I get the nomination, he's not winning. And Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things. Again, two horse race for me. I, I heard Dolly was amazing. I, 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 you've all, you're also going to hear this. Ruffalo gives a career best performance here. I've yeah. never seen Ruffalo this good ever. And you know, Ruffalo's been in some good stuff that wasn't Marvel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ruffalo is an incredible actor. I think this is a career best from him. I I don't know. I th- this is for me. This particular category is flip a coin. I'm gonna say Downey, but that's just. I'm not. I'm. I, do I believe Oppenheimer is going to be the one to steal most things this year? Yes. So a bit of a spoiler to the other predictions, but. I believe Downey may just tip this one. As much as Ruffalo may deserve it, I get that. Um, yeah. I think this could Remember, be they may give it to Ruffalo on the basis that Downey's already got an academy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also they get that. It's very hard to judge how they, this, this for me is the hardest one because I can't separate these two. Like they, they, Literally, they're equal in terms of what they delivered. They are so good in these roles that I can't separate them. Um, Supporting actress, we've got, this is kind of a dead category for me in the sole basis that four of the five of these movies, sorry, three or out of the five of these movies, I haven't seen. Emily Blunt in Oppenheimer was fine. I'm surprised she's been nominated, to be honest. Uh, Danielle Brooks in The Color Purple. America Ferrara in The Color Barbie. Purple's not even come out here yet, so we can't. Exactly. Can't do- America Ferrara in Barbie. I, I don't get that vote. Jodie Foster in Niad and uh, Devine Joy Randolph in The Holdovers. Real talk, I can't comment on this list. Look, I, I like... The ones America. I've seen, I don't think should be nominated, personally. I like America, but that was not that was not her film of the year. If anything, give me her in Dumb Money and you may have more attention seeking than Barbie. That, that fact, fact. That, that there's no in between on that. Cool. Uh, best actress. Weirdly, I think this is a a two horse race again. Um, but again, it could all go wrong. So, best supporting actress. We've got Annette Benning for Niad. Everyone's favorite is Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon. Reason being is she literally outshines DiCaprio and De Niro. Let's not be under any illusion. De Niro, DiCaprio. These are two first ballot Hall of Famers. If there was a movie Hall of Fame, 
you put these two in on your first round without blinking. Of actors working today, these two are first ballot Hall of Famers. And yet Lily Gladstone outshines them in a Martin Scorsese movie. It's quite the thing to behold. So this might be hers. However, Sandra Hullet in Anatomy of a Fall can't comment. Kerry Mulligan in Maestro was good. She wasn't Lily Gladstone good. Emma Stone might be in for her second Oscar here. She was incredible in Poor Things. And again, I think she's turned in a career best here, which is saying something for Emma. But I think this mm -hmm. is the best. She, I think this is the best she's ever been. So any other year, I'd say just give it to Lily now. Don't even do this category. But Emma, man, what she did in Poor Things, AJ. Like it's it's unreal. No, I've not seen either, but I've always had that soft spot for Emma Stone. So I'm always going to be like. She's always going to get my vote. And I know it's I'm not, it's industry, not public vote, but I would like to see, I would like to see that. I would like to see that. But then going back okay. to your Downey Jr. argument, if she's held yeah. one already. That's the thing. And you're talking about a woman who is outshone without sweating two first ballot Hall of Famers here. It's crazy. Um, best actor. This is tricky, this one. Bradley Cooper for Maestro, Coleman Domingo in Rustin. The one everyone is talking about is Paul Giamatti in The Holdovers. Everyone, The, the populist people, because that's the only movie they've seen, would say Killian Murphy in Oppenheimer and Jeffrey Wright in American Fiction. I think Paul Giamatti might steal this, you know. See, it's really funny. I saw the poster to the holdovers just the other day. It was literally in the cinema in, in central London. Like, oh, looks interesting. But I haven't seen it. It's one of those weird things where the Oscars do this weird stuff sometimes. You know, like look, look back at La La Land. Both Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling both nominated for leads, right? Emma Stone wins, Ryan Gosling doesn't. It's one of those weird things. This might be sacrilegious to say, and it's not something I want because I adored Killian Murphy in this movie. But if the if Oppenheimer does have a big sweep this year because of how good the other lead actors were, I worry Killian might be the one not picking up his prize. Heard it here first. I don't think Killian's getting this. I'd like to be wrong, but I don't think he's getting this. I think they're going to do a swerve on us. I can't say I can't say having not seen this is my problem. This I'm very like bland on the best actors because yeah. And then we come to the big one. Best picture. I can comment on a lot of these, thankfully, but American fiction, anatomy of a fall, Barbie. That's the surprise. The holdovers, killers of the flower moon, maestro, oppenheimer, past lives, poor things. Zone of interest. So, three horse race for me, this one. Okay. It's Poor Things. It's Oppenheimer. And something is... Uh, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon is not winning this. And something is telling me Something is telling me that they're going to have a hard on for Anatomy of a Fall. I've just got that vibe to it. So I don't know how to pick this one. I, I'm. I think they're going to go with. I, I think this is the Lifetime Achievement Award. I think they're going with Oppenheimer here. I think Nolan finally gets to see his picture win. Best. Picture. My heart. My heart says Oppenheimer is sweeping. I, I, I said it earlier, and I, I, I stick to it. Barbie, I feel that Barbie is in there. Not that they need to, because it's not that kind of, it's not a popularist, it's, you know, it's an academy-based. But where cinema was on the ropes, and I'm not saying Oppenheimer wasn't a saviour, Barbie most definitely was. And I feel this is a thank you. It's a thank you nod. The chances of winning 
are, yeah. are dead. I, I feel I feel where cinema where people are like, well, what can can cinema survive? Cinema's dead. It's all about stream X, Y, Z. So by that like. logic, by that logic, I love that sentiment because I think the Oscars do need to recognize when cinemas are on the ropes, movies that come along and save it. Let's just be clear. There were two movies that made a billion dollars last year. Oh, it's called. It's good. I know it's called Barbenheimer. No, but... Oppenheimer didn't make a billion. Oh well, I mean, it was the biggest wave anyway. But yes. Oppenheimer made fifty percent of what Barbie did. If we're doing it on the basis of saving cinema, where the hell is Super Mario? One point two million. Quite come million. On. They've got the animation category and what have you. Should we have a look at animation, eh? Because I bet you Mario didn't even get a nomination. I'm just best animated feature: The Boy and the Heron, Elemental, Nimona, Robot Dreams, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. That's a bitch move. Now, here's the thing: Do I think that Super Mario should in any way be nominated for an Oscar? No, I do not. Should it be nominated for best animation? It was beautifully animated. There'd be an argument made for that. But to put Barbie in a category like Best Picture in a year where movies like Dumb Money have come out? Now, I'd like to define what I think a snub is here. Because we all love to use this term, Oscar snubs, right? We've done a top 10 list on it. A snub is not, they didn't get nominated, that's a snub. At least that's not what it is for me. Tell me if this you agree with this. A snub is a movie not being nominated that legitimately could have won. Yeah. Not just you, you weren't nominated. It's like, unlucky. Dumb Money was one of the best movies of last year. My number one. My number four. Yeah. Dumb Money was incredible. Nothing for Paul Dano. Do I think he could have won this year for Best Actor? Let's refresh. I think he could have been nominated. So maybe nomination not a snub. I'm listening to. Nomination dumb I'm money. Listening to. Dumb money I would have put in there over Barbie. Question. Yes. Did Air fall into last year's Oscar category? Should have been this year. That's, that's a disrespect. Now, those are two very good films. I don't think Air ever stood a chance of being nominated. I think it was one of those come and go, very, very, very good movies. But it was it. it you got to remember when you release is also so crucial to, to your Oscar campaign. Air just it released at the wrong time to be on the Oscar trail. But so those are kind of so. So let's now talk about how how to fix this Oscar problem before we now start looking at some of the problems that exist within. This is still part of the same video for the editing purposes. So you've got. All these categories, and look at just breaking down the main ones with one of us not knowing half of the categories and just breaking down five categories. Look at the length of the video, right? Now you're going to do this with commercials in between, with stand-up comics doing very woke, very safe bits to the degree that Kevin Hart, who I support, came out recently and said, stand-up comics shouldn't do Oscars anymore because we can't say what we're allowed to say. Facts. You've got all these types of give to charity. I support charities, that's fine, but this all takes up time. Then you've got the acceptance speeches. Then you've got the two people that they bring out to read the names, the videos that roll, and it starts adding up to four hours. It's too long. And I, I'm going to use the video that we've done now as a prime example of how the Oscars should maybe think about operating. No disrespect to the less... I hate to use the word lesser, but for, for argument's sake, for, for the lesser categories, less popular, less popular. less popular categories, you don't need the same level of treatment if the modus operandi of the program is to make it shorter and get more butts in seats. I'm sorry, people don't care about hair and makeup. People don't care about costume design. Some people do, most don't. It's just a fact. Do you know... Do you know, it's one of these things, and I know it's going to be seen as sacrilege. Sacrilege, what I'm about to say. Absolute sacrilege. Maybe recognise these different categories in a better time. And I can't find the exact way to, to make this make sense, but bear with me. 
Could you imagine a best hair and makeup and best costume design being done as a closer to, and I know it's, everyone's like, but the Oscars is one day event, da, 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 da. but a closer to something like a London Fashion Week or a New York Fashion Week. It it falls in I the love category. That. I love that. People I think that's fall. a wonderful idea. So you, you culminate and there are different seasons. So instead, of, it's still under the Oscar brand. It's still the Academy Award, but it now falls in the time when people's eyes follow that specific genre yeah know? it's relevant um, you know it, i don't want to say animation should only be in summer or something like that but you start to play with it to break it down that throughout the time the oscar the oscar you've got different oscar seasons and your main bit is in mm, no. in this prime era that you've got but you, I, I can't i haven't got the full answer but you get what I'm saying. Uh, certainly you what, I get what I get. What you're going for. I'll tell you why I don't like it is because then you're not acknowledging peers on the same platform. You have to acknowledge them on the same platform, but they're also for the sake of the audience consumption has to be a realization that you can't give each award the same treatment. Yeah, we're not being equal because guess what? These awards are not equal. Best hair and makeup is not equal to best picture. It's just not. This is literally a contributor to that. That yeah. enables this. But you it's see, this is the that. problem. This is the problem. And I know, here's, going back to a pod that we have on our other channel. Someone once, they, they, someone had a conversation with someone else. I don't want to get into the whole detail, but the crux of it was, once you started something, it's very hard to stop it. Now, as much as we say it's not the populace, Look at, and I'm not saying it's the same as the writer's strike, but sometimes you then show people that in order to be recognized, if you remove it, then it becomes a fight to show what recognition is. And I believe it all depends how many, dare I say, how many Oscars come out, because as you said, it's a component of. And if you could just join the components of, but then someone's going to be, it, it, it's weird because as much as it's not to us, there is a small, dare I call it, cult because of the nature, the number yeah. followers to it, you know, and it, it's very difficult to say we're now going to remove this or eliminate it, even though it's just a crux to what made the, the, best thing. Picture, the best picture. We're talking about putting butts in seats. Cults don't put butts in seats. It's just, this, no, this is a very, this is a very but, harsh but If you get reality. rid of hair and makeup, then by mm. the same nature, cinematography should somewhat be gone because yeah. it's what made the I film. agree. I agree. It should. I don't like it as a cinematographer, but I agree. The, the argument isn't, are these, do these categories lack merit? Obviously they don't. You need these categories to make a movie a best picture of the year contender. But for the sake of an audience being in the know about the big, what the audience deems to be big, and the Oscars wanting to cater to a wider audience, can you really, for four and a half hours, justify filling some of that time with hair and makeup when your average audience member doesn't even pay attention to that stuff, however rightly or wrongly? But here, can I tell you, this is where you, I don't want to say contradict yourself, but where an argument kicks off, it's not for the audience member, it's an industry-based award. No, and that's, that's the, the point I'm making. No, the industry-based award, but the but the but the the award body want it to have wider appeal. That's the whole point of this. So, debate. if they want wider, if okay, if we're talking to a mass market wider appeal, then by all means, and without I, 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 sacrificing I, I, how they pick their movies. No, well, I would change it because here's the thing: because I would say, in terms of merit and what makes you do a ballot. All of these parts, in order to make a big picture, I don't want to call it Dragon Ball, but it's a fusion. It, it's a case of now, in order for you to be a best picture, you need to have the best hair and makeup. You need to have the best costume. You need to have the best cinematography and editing. Because essentially, what is best picture should you take away all of those? So it feels like that the subdivision of it is, is the weird question. Is the weird re my, my bigger question is why was it that? If that's what is best picture in its best in, in its purest form. Because a movie like Barbie is going to require more hair and makeup of an advanced nature to bring the movie to life than a movie like Oppenheimer. But that doesn't but elevate does it, the movie. Though? Of course does it does. It though? Because for better or worse, Barbie Oppenheimer is a period piece. 
No matter which way you want to look well, at it, it, look, it, it, it. Look at the makeup and hair. Look at the hair and makeup in Barbie. You cannot tell me Oppenheimer needed that. Level. Obviously, because it's, it, it, I, I get that. Look, I mean, obviously. That, but I'm using that, that as a point. That's yeah. the point I'm making is that some movies will naturally lend themselves better to certain categories than others. That doesn't necessarily make them better movies. It just but, means but, but by more... merit, the creator by merit. will argue, which is a trash movie, will arguably win best visual effects because it had the best visual effects objectively. Whether I like the movie or not is irrelevant. It had the best visual effects. Does that all of a sudden mean it should be in contention for best picture? F no. You know what happens, and I know it sounds really bad, but once you start to amalgamate all this stuff in order to work, say what makes picture. Even though you can have, let's say each, you have 100%, you've got five categories, 20% each, whatever, we, whichever way you want to play it, right? We'll just call it five categories at 20% each. You need to, even if you've got a full 20% for visuals, you need to still qualify as an overall 65%. No, I hate this. You cannot treat, you cannot treat movie, movie. How, the, how, how do you break it down then? Because everything you say will then have an argument for why a thing has to maintain. Now, if you, you've got the best visuals, but your screenplay is terrible, your, your hair and makeup doesn't follow out, but you've got the best visuals, how else do you break down what it is? So this doesn't is have to be terrible, which means that your hair and comes. makeup doesn't make the hair and makeup category. Oppenheimer doesn't make the hair and makeup category. Should it be nominated for best picture? Yeah. Yes, but then, but by by your ticking of other boxes, because again, as much as you don't have Barbie points, it still doesn't mean you're five percent. You can still be, again, yeah. using my analogy. But mate, movie you movie, can't fix it. movie accreditation isn't an exercise in box ticking, though, is it? It's an exercise in acknowledging some of these boxes, but working off of ultimately raw emotion that the movie created. What can validates you... what validates the removal of any of these? This this is where I'm saying it becomes very grey area. Of course it becomes grey area. That's the very nature of accreditation. Yeah, but I'm saying problem, when we're talking the, how do you the fix problem it? The problem that we're trying to discuss isn't how is the is the is the ranking proper or not. It's how do you get more butts in seats? My proposition is it's too long. Oh, but the Oscars could be half an hour if we're gonna play that game because there's only four categories people care about. Right. I think make it an hour. Get the other things rushed. You don't need to have three people come out on stage, wave, open an envelope, then give a speech, then read out the nominees, then play each nominee on screen, then reveal the nominee. Right. F that. All you have to do is roll the video, and the nominees for best short documentary are bang, 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 and your winner is have the winner come up on stage. Right there, you've eliminated 10 to 12 minutes per category. Seriously, judge it next time you watch one of these. You're not, it's not that you're not giving these other look, categories. I haven't even hosted award, award ceremonies. I, I, I agree with you tenfold. Yeah, like, this is what I think the Oscar problem is. It's the fanfare and pomp that I believe they're applying to, again, the less popular categories that don't need it. Because bringing Jennifer Lawrence out on stage to say, and the award for best short documentary is just like, honey, I love you, but you, you've never done a short documentary. Why is Jennifer Lawrence coming out on stage other than to flaunt a freaking dress made by Prada? Did it. Roll the video. Here's your nominees. Here's your winner. Get the winner up on stage and do your speech. I don't need people you know, coming out and telling me what the nominees are for hair and makeup. You know like, oh. Do you know what it is? One of the things we have to appreciate, and this is why I think the difficulty stands, and please take this with a grain of salt of what I mean when I say this. Mm. If you're in the arts, you're pretentious as hell. And for you to now feel snubbed in an event that is categorically known that everybody's a VIP, how dare I be a video role when this one gets it? it oh, if you sure. uproar for that sure. you'll find, it's just for sure, for sure. I completely agree with you. The initial uproar will be gargantuan, but for the purpose of the argument, which is how do you get more people to watch the Oscars? I'll tell you something else treading dangerous territory here, but going with your argument before of you know, movies that save cinema save cinema. 
We're talking about the movies that make money. Why is there not a blockbusters category? There's your popular category. That's something people tune in for. And the blockbusters this year, which are literally based off of the movies that made the most money, which is dangerous territory, because that means Transformers could be an Oscar winner. <laughs> Picture the idea. The problem they have, and if I'm honest with you, is that if you're, trying is, to, if you're trying to appeal to the popular market, then yeah, you have to put Transformers in there because that's what people recognize. You have a lot of people who are of a nature of knowing what an Oscar is and hearing it, but then they hear something like Spotlight as one and they're like, who? What? Exactly. Stuff like Room. Correct. And you're like, huh? And don't get me wrong, Room is popular yeah. as hell, but it's still like, in huh? Our Where circle, was? Mate. Where w No, even people outside of it, because it's like Room made ripples on its own. It made its Some ripples. Through streaming, through streaming, more than anything. Barry Keoghan is. Ask the next person who Barry That's Keoghan different is. Argument. Different argument. I didn't, I didn't mention him. He's not in Room. I'm saying how the ripples that Room made. As popular as it made itself, I'm not saying anyone could Brie. I'm not saying anyone can say Brie Larson. I'm not saying anyone can say Jacob Tremblay. I'm saying the film is what it is, right? Now, and I know people have seen Saltburn. They still couldn't tell you his name. This is the yeah. fact of it. There are certain yeah. ways of it. And, you know, Saltburn's made its ways, again, through streaming. And I'm not saying that. That's but a movie. Apple. Thank you for reminding me. That's a snub. Saltburn not being nominated for Best Picture. That's crazy. But here we go. People are now going to play that game. If you're going to want to appeal to the mass market, there are people who are going to say, where is Mario? Where is isn't Across the Spider-Verse? They're going to be happy Barbies there if you're playing the popular game. Mm -hmm. People, and you think Transformers is a thing. People wondering... Why Vin Diesel isn't up for Best Actor because of what he's done for every Fast and Furious movie? Never this is should a blockbuster actor be up for Best Actor unless it's something. But you know, like I'm a... saying, if you're trying to appeal to the populace, sometimes you have to be true to your nature. But I'll that's... tell you what. I'll tell you what. I actually very much, if we're going down that, that you have one populist category. Hell, Fast X last year, Fast X, Barbie, Mario, Across the Spider Verse. And there was there, there must be another movie that made over five hundred. Oppenheimer technically would qualify as a blockbuster. It made over five hundred million. Um, Mission Impossible, for instance, have a blockbuster category. Have one category where you can bring in the general public and be like, these are the movies that a lot of people saw last year that were actually pretty damn good. Big blockbusters. Yeah, here you go. Have at it. That, I think, would get butts in seats. However correct or incorrect to the grain and nature of the Oscars, we all agree that they do need to get a bit more in touch with mainstream, and mainstream go to blockbusters. So, question, by nature, because a blockbuster has made X amount of money and it's there, you're then open to then the director category being more open because it's the director that made the film. No. It is. The director category. And funnily enough, that's a really good point. Because that's going to lead us very nicely into our next video, which will kind of answer your question. 